Okay, so this is lesson number five, and we're gonna go up to File, New, Project, and we're gonna create a new Windows Forms application, and we will just call this down here in the name, Lesson 05. Again, with no space bars in the name, we'll just go ahead and say okay. If it prompts you to save your previous code, go ahead and say yes to do that. And now we have a blank form. Now, essentially in this uh, lesson, we're not really gonna do a lot on the UI. This is really about understanding the underlying uh, code logic in your class um, or in your application. So in this case here, really all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just scroll up in my uh, forms controls here and I'm just gonna drag a button and then I'll probably just dra drag a uh, text box here um, and that'll be my result of whatever I may wanna do. So I'm just gonna put the button over here, we'll align the text box. Let's maybe even drag out the text box size a little bit. We'll resize our form. And let me show you something new in here as well. So when I click on this text box, what I can do is if I go down to the properties at the lower right, we're gonna scroll up until we find the anchor property. Now, one thing uh, too, if for some reason your uh, properties are not sorted in alphabetical, there's two different ways of sorting. You can group the, th the properties based on certain sort of groups, um, and then there's alphabetical. I usually use alphabetical because I am searching for very specific properties. So that's uh, if for some reason your, your list didn't appear the same as mine, that's probably why. Uh, but here I can choose this anchor option and you'll see that basically what this means is that the size of this text box will automatically grow if the form size changes. So right now it's aligned to anchor to the left and the top, but I'm also going to set it to anchor to the right. So what does that mean? Watch this. If I stretch the form, you'll see that the text box control will essentially uh, stretch with that. Now let's just change this button. Uh, the text will just say do stuff. And then we'll again just practice coming in here at the top and we'll just say button underscore do stuff. And there can't be any spaces in the names. On the text box, we'll just change that to text underscore uh, stuff results. And just whatever logical name makes sense. And then, um, you know, if we wanted to really practice here, we could go to the form, just click on the form itself, go to its text property, and we could call this lesson uh, number five. Okay, so there we have the user interface, and if we just uh, double click on the do stuff button, again, that will create a event handler within the form, and so when we press this button, this code that's inside of this uh, open and close curly brackets is going to basically be executed. Now, in this particular example uh, and training video, what we're gonna cover is different data types. And I'm not gonna cover everything under the sun, but I just wanna show the basic declaration of uh, variables again, um, as well as the different data types. And so in C Sharp, you, uh, well, there is a var uh, like option, but I'm going to explicitly or specifically um, type out the data types that I want for my variables. Uh, so I'm just gonna type in int, and let's just say number integer as the name. And you know, when it comes to naming variables, there are different philosophies on this. Um, you know, you'll have to come up with a naming convention. Some people will make any internal properties and things like that. They'll make them lowercase. Um, sometimes they'll make the each of the keywords uh, uppercase. So it's kind of up to you. There, there are programming standards related related to that. I'm not going to focus on that too much here. Um, so you can kind of do whatever you want. But int is the data type that this variable is. This is the variable name. And then I'm gonna set it equal to 45. Okay, so I cannot do 45.5 because that would not be an integer. And Visual Studio bombs and tells me that, hey, that is not acceptable. So watch this, if I go to build, build solution, we'll see here, cannot explicitly, uh, implicitly convert double to int. So that brings us to the next data type. So let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, 0.5 there. Let's do double and we'll just say number with decimals. And that's gonna equal 45.6789. Now at the end of every declaration or C-sharp statement, there is a semicolon. Now there's a few exceptions to that and that will happen like when we do loops and certain things like that. But in general, every uh, statement in C-sharp ends with a semicolon. Now let's do another one. Let's do string and this is string example equals hello world. OK, 
okay? Now, essentially, we have all of these different data types. Now, there's one other common data type that I'm going to show you, but beyond uh, these four that I'm going to show you, um, really, there, this is mostly what you need to know in order to do stuff with Tecla structures and custom programming tools on Tecla. So Boolean is like kind of a true or false. Uh, that's what bool means or Boolean. And so we'll just say true, false statement. And then we'll just say equals. And you'll see here that it's got a specific keyword of true or false. Okay. And so that's if you're doing like conditional statements, like if you need to know, hey, do something if it's true or do something else if it's false. All right, so those are the four different data types. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say a label. Um, let's see, did I put a label here? I did not put a label, I did a text box, didn't I? So text underscore stuff results dot text equals, basically we're gonna go get the results of these variables and we're gonna display them. So I'm just gonna start with number integer, and then I'll do a semicolon at the end. And again, Visual Studio is saying, hey, there's a problem here because I cannot convert an integer to a string value, which is what this text box is expecting. So at the end of the integer, I can convert that integer to a string by just saying dot at the end of the variable name and just converting that to string. So the reason why there's parentheses at the end of this to string is because this is a method or a function. So basically, this is an, it's almost like when I think of comparing certain things in C sharp to like normal English language. Imagine that like, uh, basically, this is like a verb. So it's like an action. That's what a method is. You're going to hear me say the word method a lot. And in uh, other programming languages, it, it typically means function or an operation to do stuff. Right, like add two things together, that's a, that's a method or that's a function. And so this conversion of this number to a string value is basically a method or a function. All right, so now if we actually build this, we'll see that there's no errors. So let's just press play and we'll say do stuff. And there we have integer is basically 45 and that's the result. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to do this and see if you can convert all of these before I show you how to do this. So see if you can follow this two string logic here and basically do the same thing for each one of these other variable types. All right, so we're back and I actually just uh, pasted my code here to show you what I needed to do. and. Notice here that I added the dot to string pretty much on all the other variables except for um, the string example because that already was a string data type and I didn't need to do anything there. Now, here's how you can comment out code. So if you do a, a slash here, forward slash basically twice, um, and then you'll notice that uh, the code turns green and this may, basically means it's being commented out. Um, so I'm just going to comment out all this code. Now, here's another way to quickly comment out a whole block of code or uncomment it. If you select everything up here, go to the top in Visual Studio on your toolbars, there's this uncomment the uh, selected lines. And that will take basically those uh, forward slashes off. Or you can comment a whole block of code. This is really handy when you're trying out different things or you don't know if something works or you're trying to test where a, a bug might be and you want to comment, comment it out, out certain code. Or if you want to even write yourself notes about what certain things in the code does, then you could add comment lines here. So uh, basically the compiler will ignore um, anything in a comment line. So this is an example comment line. Okay, so for testing purposes, we're now just going to uncomment like one of these at a time and we're gonna see what we get. So we'll run the code, do stuff. Awesome, 45.6789. And then let's just comment that out. And then we will do uh, basically the string example. And that says, hello world. So there you go. So this is just basically showing you the different data types. So int is essentially uh, a number. It could be a negative number. It can be negative um, 45 or 45 or any non-decimal number. Then there's double, um, which doubles are like the largest number with decimals there is. There's also a, a decimal variable type. And there, there, there's actually a lot of other uh, core uh, variable uh, and data types in C-sharp. 
I'm not showing you all those uh, because again, when, in working with Tecla structures, these are the four most common things that you're gonna be doing because the API pretty much works with these raw data types almost in all cases. And that's why I'm only showing you these. They do end up using a little bit more memory, like for instance, the double and the int, but for what you're doing on a desktop application, you'll never run into that being a problem. And um, so essentially this is just giving you a basic introduction to declaring variables and then um, you know walking through what the different data types look like. Now in the next set of videos, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of look at some of the nuances. How do you do things with um, different data types and how do you add things together, subtract things, um, search through strings and things like that and find specific things that you're looking for. So that's what we're gonna cover next.